I've yet to see a driverless car, but I bet that it's headed to the funeral of some hospital. Google, Tesla, and many others are working feverishly on driverless cars. I don't know how many car drivers will really want to give up the control, but large trucking companies are doing the calculations, no caps on hours driven per day, and most important, no drivers to pay. Technological leaps of the same magnitude are impacting healthcare, and the pace is certain to increase. For example, robotics in hospitals, from the delivery of supplies to robot-assisted surgery, will impact both the labor needs within a hospital and the potential location of the surgery and the surgeon, if one is needed at all. Or, for example, the miniaturization of equipment, including monitors. Ponder what this means for the future of hospitals, at least in their present configuration. And ponder what it means both in negative impact and in opportunities for you. Hospitals are essentially large factories. Those factories can be broken down into components. Chief among them are their main economic engine, the operating rooms, and their hotel-like patient bed functions. Compare this with freestanding ambulatory surgery centers. They are hospitals minus the hotel functions. So, if cars can drive themselves, trucks will soon be self-driving. And if trucks can self-drive, so can ambulances. And here's the quite plausible leap. If ambulances can self-drive, so too, taking advantage of computerization, robotization, and miniaturization, so too can hospital rooms. Now, come on, play this out with me. Imagine a hospital that's akin to an ASC and an airport terminal. Patients are picked up at home in a shipping container size, self-contained, self-driving hospital room. Now, let's call it a, a pod. The pod travels to the hospital and docks. The patient has the procedure inside the facility's OR and then returns to the pod. The pod could be undocked and shifted to an area adjacent to the building and stacked and sorted robotically in the manner of shipping containers within a present-day storage facility. When it's safe to send the patient farther away from the hospital hub, the pod would be driven back to the patient's home where it would be sitting there remaining until discharge. Due to the effects of miniaturization and remote monitoring, the patient would be under constant supervision, chiefly robotically, but with some human participation. Some follow-up procedures could be performed remotely. And if a problem were to arise, there'd be no need to call an ambulance. The entire room would start driving to the hospital and could even be met partway by paramedics or other responders. Or, for minor surgery, those procedures commonly performed today in an ASC, the entire OR and its minimal staff could be contained in the pod and transported to the patient's home. The procedure would take place and the patient then assisted back into their home. The OR would then drive off to the next case. What's lost in terms of turnover is gained in terms of huge reduction in operating expenses. Little staff, little space. In fact, if the procedure could be performed remotely or completely robotically, the portion of turnover time between cases might go the way of the covered wagon. Sure, I could be wrong about some of this, but I don't think I'm wrong about all of this. How will this impact referral patterns? How will this impact where physicians work? How will this impact the notion of exclusive contracting or ACOs? Or just as physicians branched out to ASCs, taking procedures away from hospitals, will physician-owned mobile units obviate the need for hospitals themselves, except for the most serious of surgical cases? It's not that the rules will be changing. The whole game will change. If you haven't read it already, go to my website at advisorylawgroup.com and soon also to be at weisspc.com to download a free copy of my book, The Impending Death of Hospitals. Mm -hmm.